Fox created. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Coward Podcast. Yo, run for them life. When I step into the jungle, say they wanna group up. They better move up, never gonna win a Royal Rumble. When I come through, you know what I love to. Send shots for your team and leader. I make a witness decide to vacate. The war's getting sweet just like a Ribena. Yo, yo, listen, if you hear that. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Yo, listen, you hear that? Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Level! <laughs> We have a legend inside the place, one of the B-Boy Originals, West Coast pioneering, style elements crew, I cannot stop gushing, the man is in the building, B-Boy Crumbs, what are we saying? Oh my brother. (laughs) Yeah man, we're here. Breaking can be very trendy. You know what I'm saying? And the new trends come in, and whoever's hot with that new trend, once that trend is over, mm, they, they, if they don't evolve, they dissolve. You know what I'm saying? So I've seen it a lot of niche, come and go. like one yeah. hit wonders almost like mm-hmm. a niche. And the, the, the problem with that is they probably weren't well rounded, mm. you know? And being well rounded, and number one for me is creative. That is what's going to give you longevity. <laughs> There's a lot of dons up here, but there's only one don the buck stops at, all right? In Hive, here's a new exhibition which is up and up and at him right now. A man that has history from the 80s, mid 80s onwards, from London to Manchester to Blackpool. This guy is pivotal. Like I said, the buck stops here with this gentleman with a style all of his own. It's been forged from nothing but graft. Uh, originally at the name Time One, still standing with that name with the emergence of his graft from front to back. He knows where it's at. You guys are known as T Connection 72 on the gram. It is Time One, T Connection 72. Oh, <laughs> what are you saying, my guy? I'm good, man. You have to make choices. You have to make a decision about putting full stops in place, saying that's got to end that behaviour from other people, you've got, to, you've got to come away from, and I want myself to manifest this behaviour and I'm only going to be doing it through discipline and graft, putting effort mm-hmm. in, because we live in a, an age, and, and I've been there, we've probably all been there, where you expect everything to come easy and you're frustrated when things aren't working right for you. And and the answer when that, when that doesn't happen is not to step away from stuff. It's to go ten. Does not leave me any more than to say his name, uh, V Recordings model. Uh, you know what I mean? Rick Cross collaborator and albums galore. The mighty Genesis Elijah. Uh, <laughs> it's really based on junctures in your life. And um, I think with a lot of this frustration, which mm. happens through, a, you know, a series of different events that yeah. in our timelines, we just see them as, you know, coaches on a train. You know what I mean? Like mm. this is, these are pent up emotional boxes that we internalize shit. Yeah. Maybe it just like one part of our career. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get through the mist and you're clear again. Yeah. Is that so curious how that fucking happens, man? It's perspective, man. Mm. It's perspective. You're you're not you're not seeing you you don't get to see the whole train. You mm. literally just you're exactly it's just carriages you get to see. And I think the older I the older I get in in what I do, the less personal I take it and the less attached to the outcome I become. Mm. And the more I get to play the game and enjoy it. Which is, which is why, like, I don't do genres anymore. I just do whatever genre I want to do at that time. We'll come because, to that in a bit. <laughs> because to me, again, it's like the freedom of, of being a creative. Like, there's, there's, you don't have to attach, oh, this part of my career is when I'm doing this and this part of my career is when I'm doing that. It's like, nah, what do you feel like doing right now? <laughs> West Hollywood, this ain't the vocation of my special guest that's inside the place. Um, he is a veteran of the graffiti scene, TDT. 
K D U T I Z Z Z C one inside the place. Yo, what's going on, Keller? How you doing, <laughs> man? Good. What's going on with you, man? At that time, all we were doing was just writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. That's all we were doing. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of rights, it's 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 expressing. We were expressing ourselves, you know, in in a way that New York was ready to receive the expression, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they didn't know how to interpret it. Yeah. You know, and so you have this massive movement coming, and even New Yorkers were watching. Wow, wow, wow. they just look like they took that regular just writing, mm -hmm. and now it's got all of these colors in it, oh, and it's that, 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 and it's on a train. Yeah. And then I go on the inside, and it looked like somebody made a marker and took that weird tag from the top of the the, the, <laughs> the panel, and it's dripping all the way down like that. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, when you get to that point, and you realize. The drippy tag was a sign of authority. Yeah. That was authority. <gasps> that was authority. When you put a tag and it's dripping like that, that meant something. This is a moment. Been waiting for this gentleman to come through and on the eve of his new album, More Calling Orson. And believe me, there's a lot of, lot of avenues we can discuss on the topic of b-boy-isms. This gentleman isn't just an MC, he's not just a producer. This guy, is a, he's, a, he's an institution. He's a cult classic. He's got cult following to die for. And a lot of you lot will know him by one singular name. He goes by the name of Jest. What are we saying? Yes, sir. Pleasure to finally be in the hot seat. I have to explain to like someone in their 20s, yo, for me... It is just the inconvenience. Whereas for them, that's like, oh, what do you mean? That's part and parcel of mm. being an artist, right? What do you mean you don't like being on Instagram? Mm. No, I don't. I don't want to deal with any social media. Look, I'm older. Like, yeah. you, imagine you just went to work and they said, now you have to do, now you are also the PR department. Now, I'm not the fucking PR department. Mm. It, it, do you know what it is, though? I think it's because I'm waiting for somebody to say to me, like, oh, no. Nah. No, nah, this group, this artist collective or this thing. Oh no, those guys, they're just operating like that. And I'm gonna be like, okay, cool, plug me in. Mm. Let me go work. Cause it really Cause, isn't like that. Cause it's really not, it doesn't, yeah. I, all, what I get is people going, yeah, I feel like this. Yeah, like my team is sitting me down every week telling me I've got to do more. Yeah. I've got to do TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that is what artists, that's what people don't understand. That is the conversations artists, you know, when you yeah. go up the chain, yeah. the work doesn't go away. It just gets more. You've now got a team mm. And the guy from the label and all these other, and honestly, this isn't my situation, mm. but that's what I'm saying. So if you go down the chain, even more pressure to do all of that stuff yourself because mm -hmm. it's the only thing you can do, right? You better be on social media 24 seven. Mm. We ain't got shit, but you've Time got a phone. Management. You've got a phone. This is a gentleman that is uh, multi-faceted, shall we say, in the art of street culture. Now, you know when we talk about street culture, we talk about multiple disciplines. Um, very rare you get somebody that is pegging with each other um, in two genres, rap as well as graffiti. Um, some of you may know him as a criminal damage, now newly in PA, and a whole bunch of old school ones from his neck of the woods, uh, Boogie Down Berkshire, hold tight. This is the MC virtuoso graffiti artist across inside the building. How's it going, brother? <laughs> For me, that's like, one of the reasons I wanted to come on here as well. Not to sit here and say who's got the biggest dick and who's a bit like, I'm this and I'm that, because I'm not. I'm fucking a guest in this fucking culture, man, and I am. I'm a guest. I'm hopefully I'm paying my, adding my part to it and hoping, helping build it. But I'm not here to say that I've done anything fucking superior or I've done anything or I'm any sort of, any sort of level. I just thought like once when T's passed, rest in peace to the to him, man. Like, but I thought to myself, if he didn't do this podcast, there's nothing to there's no documentation of that guy's mm. graph career apart from his friends who who can pass the message on, but they're not gonna reach a wider wider audience. Mm. When his his little boy, Leo, like he's only I've done how old he's maybe two, three or whatever. Mm. When he's fucking 18 years old. And people are like, oh, yeah, your dad done this. He's going to be like, all right, it might not be nothing. But then when he goes back to listen to his mm. podcast and he'll be like, fucking mm. hell, like, mm. he was like, do you know what mm. I mean? It's, and, mm. and that was what made me want to come on. I thought, do you know, do you know what's around the corner for myself? Like, mm. and I want to say, doc I would like to say, document my story because I've got hundreds of friends and they don't even know who Across is. Mm. 
know them don't get facey. Gonna leave scars on faces. Popo got no safety. Show a man where that safe is. Big revolver, running that Volvo. I was rolling dangerous. Too cold like AC. Old school been hard since ages. I put slate on pavements. Got rock, no pavement. Hey, hey. Bro's in the kitchen slaving. Ripped that white, but man's not racist. Skin come black like Akon. Touch my fam, I swear I'll find you. Come like the guy from Taken. Hey, still trying to line up pagans. See feds and I'm overtaken. Spins been leave no casings. That's no cases. Yeah, send man to the undertakers. Bro got Kaney's able. Grind on a daily basis. Who stay ping like Mabel. Link up in the baitest places. Hey, chopping up food, I'm Jamie. I got rice and gravy. Hey, look at the wavy. I'm fully fucky, pay me. VIP section for the sexy ladies. Wanna have my babies, them dirty bitches. Pretty give them rabies, yeah, yeah. Snakes and fakes, I see them daily. One chat behind my back, real fast, but up front, them and lazy. Don't be shady. Wraps in bags from JD. Tech man's cat say thank you. You man chat with Gazy. Bro, band on Max at Stacey, eh? Hey. Why would I talk to the bacon? But I tell them porky pies on the station. Where was you when I was on basic? Where was you, eh? Hey. When I pray I make it, I ain't never been basic. No man can't fake it. Ten kings on the link up, but I'm doing up late shift. <laughs> Um, it starts here, one of, one of the originating guys, one of the people in my mind that helped set precedence in what I understand as being the truest form of hip-hop culture. Uh, a study was I as a young man uh, with the likes of this gentleman, since stars, born to rock, body popping, locking and hip-hopping all over the place without question and inspiration to me and to a lot of the UK scene. See you inside the place! <laughs> <laughs> And all of a sudden, I just felt my back go. Because at the time, I was learning, I was getting more heavily into breaking, yeah. and I was starting to really develop. Oh, and I was um, horrible. learning tracks, I think they call them yeah. grubs as well. Um, just ignore it to begin and, with. And, and just Yeah, I was, it was just a twinge. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, especially as us as men, yeah. You know, we, you know, you don't take pain seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what's that? Oh, you yeah. know, just brush that off your. And shoulder. there's a doctor's. There's a thing yeah. for that. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah exactly, that exactly. Yeah. So we were um, warming up, and I was moving tables, and these tables are quite heavy. I was trying to help them out. I was thinking I shouldn't be doing yeah, this yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. And then I just remember in the middle of the show, I went, my back just went, and I went to do some footwork on the floor, and it's like my legs wouldn't work. <laughs> We've got two characters from the UTI DOC camp holding it down from a graffiti point of view. Big shout to Das Calico, UTI DOC in the building. Right on, right on. He does, he he couldn't uh, recollect a graffiti writer that he knew that hadn't had either been stabbed or shot. It's true. Is that true? It's very true. I mean. Uh, there, there's a few situations that I was encountered in and, you know, I mean, I've been shot at, I've been chased, I've been jumped, um, you know, you name it. I mean, it, it's, it was a huge part back then because, again, predominantly most neighborhoods were ran by gangs yeah. and graffiti artists were just like the sneaky little ninja that just sneaked in and did what they were going to do and get out. Yeah. So, you know, you creeping in somebody's neighborhood sometimes got you in some really bad situations. <laughs> Uh, today we have a very special guest, somebody that uh, has been part of my journey um, in in the world of scratch DJing. I hold up scratch perverts every time, but uh, this gentleman has won some fucking trophies, ranging from four times world DJ champion to seven times, seven times DJ champion. Not to mention first DJ at the proms. <laughs> He goes by the name, the notorious, the bully, the king, DJ, <laughs> Mr. Switch inside yes, the house. Yes. Love the bully. <laughs> this is the first time I've had the chance to really dig in. Yeah, so, yeah, this yeah. is fucking great. Yeah. So so when it comes to the fan and being a fan of it, what are the things fundamentally that flick your switch? Is it... <laughs> it had to happen. It had to happen. Uh, so uh, things like, is it the... B boy personification. Is it the is it the art of selection? Is it the you know the 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 pageantry of hip hop and the the fact that you walk away the fucking fucking octagon champion? Yeah. Is it what what are these things that 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 really get you off? The drive, <laughs> the drive, the drive for me has always been. For me, it's it's take it's 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 being able to flip a track 
in a way that no one else will think of. And you don't have fucking Pro Tools, you don't have Ableton or anything. You've got the records there, and just by moving them around, you you create a whole brand new piece of music. <laughs> I have the esteemed pleasure to be frequenting and hanging out with some living legends and uh, this guy is by no means any less than a legend, a king, a mighty of the New York scene and beyond. Photographer, graffiti writer from Star Wars and upwards, he's maintained steady incline in the world of graffiti street art to the point he's here. Uh, beyond the streets, it's the mighty days inside the place. That's quite a big introduction. Yeah. Uh, the ev average school would be just full of writers or... My pockets. school in particular. Wow. Okay, so High School of Art and Design. Okay. Um, I went there, Lady Pink went there, Ernie, um, other writers named Too Mad, Chino Malo, Don Juan, uh, Inca. These are just like a few of the names, but it always had this high percentage of writers that were going there. So I spent a lot of my time in, in art high school kind of politicking with them. That's like the coolest school I think I've ever fucking heard of. It, it was pretty <laughs> pretty cool in that respect. Yeah, it was. There's two different sorts of educations going on right there. Yeah, exactly. And I was more interested in the education I was receiving outside of the class. Killer Killer Podcast, Skinny and Mongo. Yo, yo. Jeez. And we do it like this. It's the podcast that you don't ever want to miss If you do, then you know you're just taking the, taking the, taking the He said it, there's no need to edit The skinny man on the rapping, will I regret it? Yo, Mo, we get it, read it on Reddit Dog make some noise, so make them never forget it I've got one musician and I've got one graffiti writer, both dynamically gifted in all different genres, but this is their specifics, you understand. If you're into the big beat DJ culture, we have Derek Delage inside the place, and if you're into your street art from a Bristol side, big up Bristol Massive, it's inky inside oh, the yes, place. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember doing it with 3D when we were younger, and um, he's colourblind, so it was like we used to have to write the colours on for him. Really? Wow. Uh, but we used to have a laugh because we used to chuck in the wrong colour and oh, like, yeah. kind of like we could mess Brown. around. Yeah, <laughs> so he was, he, was, he was colourblind, so it was like, I don't know if you look at a lot of the early Massive Attack artwork, he, he would do a painting and reverse the photo, the negative, and use that as the artwork. Living the dream, really. Mm. You know, I, it was, uh, they were the halcyon days, man. Mm. They were, they were, it was before, before the internet, it was before. Uh, camera and video phones. Was this around manumission time? This was, was yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to be the resident DJ for for, for, for the biggest and with unquestionably the greatest club night ever, manumission. Mm -hmm. Huge. Which was, uh, yeah, was it was like it was like Disney World for adults, man. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, X rated, highly rated. Mm -hmm. uh, it was brilliant. <laughs> He was part of the fraternity that brought our attention of hip hop internationally through the medium of TV, through the medium to airwaves, from music to exhibitions to the works. This man has been the, um, the flame holder for decades yeah. now. Without yeah. question, it gives me a great honor to introduce to you Fab Five Freddy inside the place. How are we, sir? All good, all good. What's up, everybody? You know, MTV used to look kind of whack to me um, when I got asked. I remember talking to somebody when they asked me to do that. I said, yeah, these people from MTV like want me to host the show. They said, well, you know, all of those VJs are pretty, they, they look pretty whack and you'd be mm. in that space. I have this like romantic idea that you and Ricky Rackman from Headbangers Ball, did you guys ever connect? Did you ever like meet? Rackman, no, Ricky was cool. I did meet him. That's great that you remember him. Ricky Rackman, you might remember her name was Downtown Julie Brown. <laughs> and she okay. hosted a dance show. I remember them trying to figure out a way to set up a photo op opportunity to get me to do something with her. And I knew, I found out from the publicist, they were trying to make it look like we were kind of hanging out together. Can you imagine <laughs> the party boy that would have ensued? Fab Five Freddy caught on camera. You know, the, the, the tabloids would have gone crazy. Graph for me is I don't sketch. I don't really do it. I'm all about getting to that spot. 
Like, I like to live in that moment and how I got there is what? If I'd done an amazing piece on the ground, but then I'd done some absolute crazy thing to get up onto the spot, I prefer the thing I'd done at the top right. rather than at the bottom. <laughs> and if it's on top, then bonus. Yeah, mate, on top. But when you're getting on top at the end of the night, yeah, mate, that's, that's all good, especially when you get away. It, Dude, that, no that, 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 that's the cherry on the top. Yeah, mate, I don't really care what it looks like. I'm about that I've got to that spot. Really? Would you yeah. say you're a bomber? You're like more of a bomber? No, I'm a vandal. <laughs> what the fuck happened, dude? <laughs> oh, I'm not too bad. I'm getting there. Um, climbed over, like the stair bits, climbed over, done what I was doing. Yeah. And then jumped back over, but I thought I was on the lower bit of the stairs and just jumped over on it and just hit the floor. <laughs> I'm bugging because I'm a fan first, you understand? Uh, this lady is multi-genre, singer, songwriter, DJ. She just gets involved into the mix. And if you haven't heard of Mila Falls, then you've been sleeping somewhere in a very undisturbed place. Girls Next Door is the new project. And we've got a whole heap of other things. Yeah, it's a whirlwind of emotions here, especially for me, Mila Falls. How are we? I'm good. <laughs> you, know, you mentioned that, you know, that people offload creatives, especially yeah. when you're in a room of... You know, a, a, an open house, a free house of uh, throwing ideas into a into a track or yeah. and coming up with. Do you have to have a level of em empathy? That, Definitely, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. But I think you. There's been some writing sessions where everyone's crying, literally, and like people are telling me they need to go to rehab and they're full on drug addicts and need to sort their lives out, and or they are not in love with the person they're with and things. I'm like, I'm like let's write a song about it. I'm like, oh my. Killer Killer Podcast, Rock <laughs> Y'all know me not a little bit Never talk down to me or treat me like a little bitch I've always had big dreams since I was a little kid War bright colours taste the rainbow, I'm the Skittles kid I'm dreaming until my dreams become the life I live They don't like I spit, think that I should be a wife and sit No 9 to 5, I grab the mic and spit I still wear what I want with my Nike kick Shave my hair's all gone, I'm nothing like those chicks Who need weaves, big bum, tight waist and hips Hooks <laughs> come on! Beyond stoked, very excited. South London, we are going right now. FDC SOS to rain. <laughs> Avenger FDC. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Cutouts, so, just yeah. put it in context for anybody that doesn't know this in around Sorry. town. Yeah, yeah. On the side of the walls, you get these cutouts, which I guess are designed for trackies. To yeah, and the step in to let. Yeah. But they also suck you in if you're not ready for the train. Right. Yeah. So, cut a long story short, I heard the train coming, and you know you're there trying to get the last bit of the fade up, and you look at it. I said, "All right, time to go." So I started running towards the space. Yeah. As I'm running towards the space, you have got core in there. Oh fuck. You know what I'm gonna say, right? Yeah. You've got Dyer in there. And they're all in there. And you've got Sufo in there. And there's me, and I'm running to the space. And as I've looked, I said, there's no space for me. There's no space for me. And I've looked, and the trait was the old slammer, Gatwick Express. Oh. I looked. I looked that way. You're making me feel sweaty, bruv. That's bruv. so cool. I looked, and here's the, here's the cooker, yeah? As I looked, I went, fuck it. Hit the deck. You know that like, the little... They've got like a little paving slab to walk down, down the side of the track, right? Yeah. I laid down. Oh my god. And we ain't just representing the new media that's out there. This lady that I'm sitting with right now is an original graffiti writer from New York, Manhattan, Long Island original. Furthermore, a fashionista, designer, vintage, acquirer, and more. She's her own brand, superior by the logo. She goes by the name of Claw Money Inside the House. What's up? Notice girls sitting around, bored, and then when the cameras come out, oh, the party starts, boom, boom, dancing around. Hey, hey, I got moves, yeah, yeah. Camera goes, and that was like the exact opposite. It was sort of like you when you walked into the club, all bets were off, no, the, no kissing and telling. You were free to be who you needed to be and escape your everyday woes and problems and be actually free. And there's such a performativeness 
right? It's what's, you know, driving us all apart is, uh, you know, all this identity politics. There is no escape from, you know, this life anymore. <laughs> A friend of mine that goes back four years in the first time that he came round to my humble abode and uh, thought we'd return the favour. Stepping in to the labyrinth, the Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory mind, I can only describe it as one hell of an immersive experience. He promised it, he delivered it, the world of Mr. Doodle inside the land. <laughs> I was looking at ones where the neighbours are right, you know, like touching the house, like it's like a terraced house or something like that. Um, and that would have been really sort of tricky to do. And I was showing pictures of these houses to my family and friends and they were going like, oh, you know, Sam, you really can't like do to a house. You really shouldn't, shouldn't do it because people are going to get like, uh, they're going to complain about it and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to find one that was like situated in its sort of own sitting where no one could really get too mm. annoyed with how it looked and stuff. This is, this is um, what they call a high-class problem. <laughs> it's got to be a mansion. I just know it. <laughs> Let's call the investors in now. Inside the house right now is a gentleman. I feel like it's like we're really breaking through new genre boundaries here. You know, the... Yeah. the the, the, the drill import export is most definitely a fact. We're definitely taking yep. it large. And as a gentleman in Brooklyn has been holding it down for the, for the drill scene. And I've got to give him praise for the new on everything release. Hold tight. Kathy Kazo inside the place. How are you, gent? I appreciate you, fam. I'm good. Give me examples. Give me examples of how, because, because to get to have a, an understanding about the journey, it really adds, it, it helps create the, the picture and gives the weight to the content of the song. No, I understand. Um, I was in a home invasion. I lost my brother. <gasps> oh, you know, my I was God. sad about email. Like some backdoor type of situation. I don't like crowds. I'm an artist and I don't like crowds. <laughs> I got anxiety. I deal with depression, all type of stuff. People would think you lit left and right, but that's not the case. You know, that's social media. That's what it's showing there. Killer Keller podcast, Boomer, Navigator. <laughs> Baby, I just don't get it. Get it. Do you enjoy being her? Her. I know you smell the perfume. Woo. The makeup on his shirt. Do you believe in stories? Stories. You know that they're all lies. And bad as you are, you stick around. And I just don't know why She want the top of top The ear one class lover Spoon mechanism with a real cars power Then with the bed then I know me starting at the shower Sweet as so much Tia fi ball and a Allah Now me taking a break Me start back again I'm me a the rooster And then I share the mother in She will want fit test me See you when me a defend This time in another day I ride it now to the end She want the karma The super <laughs> Do you ever feel like you're being watched? <laughs> They're here. They've been waiting for you for a long time. And sitting next to me is a dual character, Lewis Fleet Henry, uh, to, to some uh, in the busking world, um, but to us on the street culture level. Goes by the name of Known Inside the Place. Big him up. It's going in and racking the spray paint and just the, t the, the determination to get the spray paint and putting yourself in that risk. Mm. And then risking your, your, so you're risking your freedom, the potentially your freedom and your life going on to like do train tracks and stuff, all for just like writing stuff on the wall. Yeah. And just putting this, getting involved in the graffiti culture. Like sometimes I'm thinking like, wow, if I did apl applied that energy, if I had someone guiding me like in a different Mm. Way where I could that energy because that energy I look back at the energy I'm like wow I had the energy so much like, power and yeah want just and like jumping up walls yeah. scaling, scaling up walls jumping down walls like fat drops like mm. and somehow not getting injured like and going up on places that you haven't really assessed and people fall through roofs and stuff like you know and being and just thinking wow like the kind of you had some kind of graffiti guardian angel there with you. Mm. Like protecting you somehow, maybe you do have some kind of because 
guard news, but not you know some uh, some of these writers have lost their lives, man. <laughs> By no means the average. My brother has been doing this from his birth inception, and I'm not even joking. I know <laughs> I know this man well enough and long enough to have the greatest of understandings that when it comes to lyricism and emceeing, he is an absolute well-oiled, built machine. It's what he does. He gets up in the morning and sleeps, eats, sleeps and shits emceeing. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> The dictionary of everything you need to know about hip hop and drum and bass. The man alongside the S A S A S A S, and of course Roadblock. It's yes. the yes, undisputed champion, Louis. Harry Shaw inside the flames. That could be the best intro I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it could, it could well be. Richly fucking deserved. The story blows up, man. Funkmaster Flex starts tweeting about it. Waka Flocka starts tweeting about it. Even T Pain did a Facebook post on it. The Breakfast Club are talking about it. The record does like a million plays in like the next five days. It goes Whoa. extremely viral. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it was everywhere. And then it, that led on, shout out to Dave, because he was onto Guinness. Because Guinness at first, they was a little bit, I don't think they wanted to let Eminem's record go because it's quite cool to have Eminem in the Guinness Book of World yeah, Records. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, and they, they, they was sort of finding a way to like log it out. But Dave was persistent, man. He was on the phone to them talking to his contact there the whole time to push it through. And in the end, it, it got so much heat on it. People were talking about it so much. It's all over the internet. They had to give me the record, man. The world record, do you know what I'm saying? They had to do it. And it still I'm stands to this day. <laughs> it still stands. World record. We're dealing <laughs> in world record holders in here. <laughs> Say your normal fucking conversation. Tell him, Kel. Fuck yeah. Listen, we're talking 2023 graffiti. And if you've been roaming about on the streets, on the track sides, on the trains, wherever you where you frequent your graffiti, uh, there'll be a man that uh, is very much part of the, uh, the tapestry. L-W-S-O-S-A-P-A, Inside the House. You'll know him as Moan. How are we, sir? What's happening, brother? Good, man. <laughs> How are you? Ended up like trying to take a shortcut back home and like ended up tripping on the third wire and got electrocuted and passed away. What? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. So what? So he, when you say he took a shortcut, he went on the, on the track? Yeah, yeah. So from like where we live to the nightclub he went to, you can either take a long journey back home yeah. or if you jump on the tracks, you can cut out like an hour's worth of walking. So the police said that yeah, he was intoxicated and tried to take a shortcut back home on his own and then tripped over the third rail and ended up being found like early hours in the morning, obviously passed away. <laughs> And on that note, oh my goodness, we have a friend of mine which has been, well, he's certainly been a part of my uh, cultural DNA since the very beginnings in the early, early teens of mine, uh, seeing him rap, seeing him be part of the theatrical world, being a part of the breaking world. This is a b-boy right here, well, and, and, and an unsung hero, John C. D. <laughs> That was an amazing big up. Since it kind of went down this realm of being a vehicle to sell product and people only doing it because this is how they're going to make money, it mm. just confuses me. Because mm -hmm. this was never about that. The, 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 the price was the experience of just doing it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That was why it was worth doing. Yeah. And, and, and also props. You know what I mean? If you're good at what you do, if you've taken out a few people in a battle... You know, if you've shown and killed a cipher, you know, that's currency, mm -hmm. you get me? 